vocation, the journey. In the words of Christ, who do you say that I am? These words could have not been any more direct. In my school days, I can remember a friend saying to me, would you ever become a priest? That was a direct question as well. My reply to that was, words to the effect, I do not have enough faith to be a priest. The answer to Jesus' question is one that we can all answer from our own experience. My answer is now that through grace, I can now say and mean, Jesus is the Messiah and the Son of the living God. My vocation grew by grace over time, dragged into a new relationship with my creator and sustainer in Jesus through the Holy Spirit. Over time, I have met so many people who have a genuine vocation for what they do. And that is through so many different walks of life. But in my latter context, they include nurses, doctors, consultants, lay visitors, volunteers, morticians, funeral directors, spiritual directors, bereavement counsellors, psychiatrists, social workers, carers, psychologists, and all those involved with allied health professionals in health. And the impressive list of people goes on. There are three strands of the definition of vocation. A strong feeling of suitability for a particular career or occupation. A calling, life's work, mission, purpose, function, position, or finding our niche. A divine call to God's service in the Christian life function or station in life to which one is called by God. It's not since the days of 1979 that I've had a lockdown haircut like this. My ordination to the priesthood was publicly witnessed 40 years ago today by the day and tomorrow by the date. That was at St. Mary's Parish Church in the North Wiltshire town of Calm. I was ordained a priest in the Church of God at 1045 by John Neal, Bishop of Ramsbury, in the north of the Diocese of Salisbury. I was ordained deacon a year before in Salisbury Cathedral by George Reindorp, the Bishop of Salisbury, and prepared at a retreat with Geoffrey Tristram by Francis Dominica, the founder of Helen House in Oxford. Geoffrey is now superior of the Order of St. John in Cambridge, Massachusetts, USA, right next door to Harvard University. This morning, in this time of reflection, I want us to think about our journey of vocation, whatever our calling is. It goes on and on, and it evolves over time. The journey entails people who we meet, and mine included a revelation because people saw in me something that I could not see myself. I turned up at the Bishop's house in Southall in Nottinghamshire as a result of an appointment made to discuss my vocation. The Bishop's daughter answered the front door and asked me whether I'd come to collect the jukebox. 
it was not the best of starts. I didn't see what others saw in me for a long time and it was a car crash and a time of rehabilitation that gave me time to reflect upon what others saw in me and hence my visit to the bishop's house. In my sermon on St Peter's Day before my first celebration of the Eucharist 40 years ago in Cannes, I related this story. The midwife who delivered me in Mansfield, Nottinghamshire at home was the daughter of a previous curate of St Mary's Calm, H. Thompson Adam. Sister Adam was baptised at St Mary's Calm, as was our firstborn Thomas. The only reason I knew this was that Sister Adam had been had seen an announcement of my ordination in the Southern Dialson News in June 1979 and told my mother by card thinking she would like to know the connection. The irony is that the midwife who should have delivered me at home was nurse Jane Thorniwell, who was unwell at the time of my birth. She had delivered my brother and sister before me at home. I used to visit Thorny, as we called her, in her retirement as a friend of the family. She lived just nearby. She comes to mind again today for she epitomizes the help and support that Jane and I have had from our families and friends over time. Thorny was someone who didn't enjoy good health for the last 20 years of her life. She was, I suppose, my first unofficial spiritual director. From her chair or her bed, she would listen well to me in my teenage years. She had a childlike quality, always wanted to know the truth, gently asking questions with her cheeky, chesty chuckle. She never dwelt on the past. She always looked to the future, always kept in touch with world events through the radio and TV and her optimism in life was founded on a faith that kept opening doors of new experiences, growing experiences, despite her bed of unwellness. In listening to my teenage angst one day, she came out with her immortal words, Edward, you have got your knickers in a twist. She knew pain and she knew the reality of new life with many mums and dads in home confinements, home births. She expected nothing from anybody but was eternally grateful for anything she did receive. A good spiritual director, I would say, can spot when we have our knickers in a twist. One of the ordination cards I received at the time was a picture of Holman Hunt's picture of Christ the light of the world, standing by a creeper-covered door without a door handle. It requires clearing all that negatively clings to us, then a gentle effort to push the door of vocation and the kingdom of God, asking God our Creator to reveal what he has in store for us. For me, the question that Jesus himself asked of his disciples and asked of us now, at this moment, when we look for meaning and purpose for the future is, who do you say I am? Not just the son of man, but the son of the living God and the Messiah. From that declaration is formed the foundations of the church and all our vocations. Who we believe Christ to be, when we have pushed at the open door, then we are equipped through the Holy Spirit to reveal the kingdom of God. 30 of my 40 years of priesthood have been in healthcare as a chaplain. A vocation ordained to be a priest, or whether it's all of us of a, another manifestation, I am still a lay person who happens to be ordained. 
is about discovering our purpose under God in Christ. I can see now that Jane and I were prepared for pastoral ministry through police service, through to a lively curacy in Cannes and being a team vicar for seven years on a new housing estate in Poole. Building a new church from our vicarage and developing that into an ecumenical project. A church built in people and bricks and service to the community. So the first purpose was pastoral visiting with families and schools and organisations and the homeless, ex-prisoners hostel and local businesses. The second purpose that was revealed to us was the vital relationship between religion and medicine. How does the whole care of people make a difference, whole care in individuals, communities, nations and the wider world? Healthcare chaplaincy including hospice care, sharing people's pain and joy and everything in between, sharing the difficult times of extreme circumstances. It is still an open road and along it are working with people of all faiths and none and our relationships one with another. The one thing that has united us in chaplaincy and community world has been helping people to be open to God's possibilities through the expertise of the medical profession and the general pastoral care and spiritual support they receive. Together this makes an enormous difference to so many. Caring for people as unique individuals, whatever their background with respect, with big ears that hear, and seeing the Christ in every person is key. Vocation. We all have something revealed to us that we can contribute to the extension of the kingdom of God in care. This last week I was in touch with Geoffrey Tristram, my fellow ordinand, all those years ago, and he was a lovely podcast he's got that I found on their Community of St John website about vocation and listening, prayer and action always. Prayer, listening to God, to others, and the grace of God touching us in body, mind and spirit. Thorny was just one person who listened and at this traditional time of ordination we remember those who have given us the quality and everyday spiritual gift of listening. Jane and I have a great memory of Thomas on his baptism day in St Mary's, the place where I was ordained, priest in calm. We answer together the question, who is the Christ? the son of the living God. He is a creator, not just of the past, but always of the future, whatever that holds. Today we offer that future to him. Vocation is about grace, not about having enough faith. Thanks be to God in Christ through the Holy Spirit who gives us that reality to reveal the kingdom of God daily. Amen. Thank you, Edward. And we take those words to heart that we're all called by God into a vocation. And at this unique time in the history of the church, that is more true than ever, that every person, the priesthood of all believers, were all called by God to do works of service and to show him the kingdom of God. And so we say together <coughs> the creed. So please mute, unmute yourselves. We believe in one God. 
the Father of the Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all that is seen and unseen. We believe, we believe in one Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, through God from God, begotten of all things, of all things, all things, on earth, and down from down for the Holy Spirit and the right hand we believe in the Holy Spirit, I go away. Thank you, so over to Edward for him to lead our prayers. Please unmute yourself, Edward. Let us pray. Please reply in your hearts, Lord, in your kindness. Hear our prayer. Encouraged by our fellowship with all the saints, let us make our prayers to the Father through our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, your Son called men and women to leave the past behind them and to follow him as disciples in the way of the cross. Look with mercy upon those whom he calls today, marks with the cross and make his disciples within the church. We pray today for all those who are preparing for ordination, those whose anniversaries of the diaconate and priesting is around this time, we pray particularly for Nick, for Pauline and her husband John, for Ros Harper and husband Phil and daughter Flora. We remember all those who do encourage us in all our vocation journeys those who have the gift of listening and hearing. We pray for our bishops, Martin and Guli, and all our team here. Lord, in your kindness, hear our prayer. Your son told his disciples not to be afraid, and that Easter breathed on them his gift of peace. Look with mercy upon the world into which he sent them out and give that peace for which it longs. And we pray for all of those of us who have any kinds of fears at this time of the unknown. We pray for those who we keep in touch with by phone, by social media, by the, all the technologies and more and more face to face. We pray for those who are particularly vulnerable still. 
Lord, in your kindness, hear our prayer. Your son formed around him a company who were no longer servants but friends. And he called all those who obeyed him his brother and sister and mother. Look with mercy upon our families and our friends and upon all the communities in which we share. We pray for the people of Leicester at this time. Lord, in your kindness, hear our prayer. Your son sent out disciples to preach and heal the sick. Look with mercy on all those who yearn to hear the good news of salvation and renew among your people the gifts of healing and wholeness. We pray for all who work within our National Health Service, care homes and nursing homes and hospices. For those who are shielding at home and for their carers. For all voluntary organisations, those who are on our minds this very day, who need our prayers. Lord, in your kindness, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer for those who care for those who are delicate of mind and low in mood. We pray that you will strengthen them at this time. Lord, in your kindness, hear our prayer. Your son promised to those who followed him that they would sit on thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel and would share the banquet of the kingdom. According to your promise, look with mercy on those who have walked with Christ in his life, in this life, and now have passed through death. Remember Sue's mum, Mary. And those who are on our minds now we have loved and lost, especially in recent times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Looking to the future, we pray, Heavenly Father, for all those researching the coronavirus, for a vaccine and we put the future into your hands and give thanks for all that you have been to us and will be to us in the future strengthening us lord in your kindness hear our prayer almighty god you have built your church upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Jesus Christ himself as the chief cornerstone. Join us together in the unity of the Spirit, that we may be made a holy temple acceptable to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.